one other question, this is probably the last question. Uh, mm -hmm. It has to do with authority and what has happened to authority in, let's say, consumer society and the way that the, the diffusion of authority, the way that it sort of works itself out in the process of every day. I'm not sort of making it coherent, but um, can you kind of speak about the way yeah, that power is deployed and authority? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the question of power and authority is very complex because it is not a society in which sort of someone stands above as the godhead and everybody else bows down. And although, in fact, in every advertising agency there are people who sit around tables and decide how they're going to get people to do something that they would, might otherwise not do, purchase this product and so on, the way authority is exercised is not purely on the level of conspiracy. I mean, to a large extent, um, you also be accused of that, by the well, the by people who don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, uh, what I have done as a historian is that I have unearthed, in fact, people who were beginning to give shape and definition to a world unfolding. Um, that is to say, there are certain moments before advertising has become what it is today before a consumer culture has really taken flight, where there are certain individuals who imagine a way of life which has not yet come, and who are, to a certain extent, visionaries of that. But, you know, the way it really happens is that a lot of those visions and assumptions and sort of presumption, uh, you know, uh, premises which certain individuals at certain given points may see and may be very articulate about the way they work their way through a culture is that they become routine, routinized into the workplace. They become, I mean, it's not as if everybody in the advertising industry is consciously, you know, trying to get people to sort of hate themselves and desire to become, you know, in, inanimate objects. Um, I think, to a large extent, the sort of, sub, you know, the uh, submerging of the subject and the elevation of the object within society really is something that is sort of filtered through in this kind of ineluctable way that cultures operate. They're not easy to find in terms of um, it's cultures speak to people in very mythic kinds of ways. It's not a set of rules which are being presented to people and it's often in a very sort of unreflective way that culture is passed on. And although, as I said, in a society where there is a large sector of people who are employed as compliance professionals, whose job it is, in fact, to get people to comply to political views or to purchases or whatever, which they, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, I think there's something quite naive about dismissing the notion that there is will and, in certain cases, conspiracy involved. Um, you know, to kind of view it as a society which is purely the result of conspiracy at the same time is nonsense. Cultures don't op cultures, there are always conspiracies throughout history, but there is also culture. And culture, the kind of way in which ideas are communicated as a way of life, is really ultimately the most persuasive form of the transmission of a culture. Um, I want to say something else about authority. Because I think now, um, you know, as sort of we uh, sort of stand on the threshold of the new millennium, right, um, and we all have lived in a society where sort of instrumental images have been used to sell everything from, you know, soap suds to dog food to human annihilation, uh, a lot of people have become increasingly critical of or at very least cynical about images. And so in certain ways, one might look at the sort of relationship between people and at least the commercial and political image world and say that to some extent, uh, patterns of authority, which had much more legitimacy some time back, are having a harder time I mean, convincing people of things. I think it's more interesting that in the US, uh, politicians have moved off of the news onto the talk show as an environment to communicate with uh, their the consumers uh, who make up the electorate. Um, I think it has something to do with the fact that news doesn't have the legitimacy that it once did. 
whereas sort of human relations, which is the stuff of, uh, of uh, uh, the talk shows, still resonates in a certain kind of way. Um, I think, though, and this is perhaps the most disturbing and pro problematic question, that although in many ways people have become more critical and or cynical about the image and the uses of the image, and in certain ways more savvy about it, what has happened simultaneous to that is that the market has become more and more pervasive. And that we're living in a time right now where the market, beyond being all-inclusive, is also being held up as a sort of object of religious devotion. And so that while certain customs of mass-mediated authority um, are having problems in terms of their ability to convince, um, the sort of hegemony of the market is more pervasive than it's ever been certainly in 20th century. And so um, we're at a moment where that market, in fact, and since the market has become increasingly a seamless image environment, as far as most people see it, um, where the market has itself, in certain ways, become the locus of authority. So I don't think that the sort of cynicism about more traditional uses of imagery necessarily means that we're moving sort of beyond authority and into a kind of anti-authoritarian mode. It's disturbing to me the extent to which the market has um, taken hold as sort of the only imaginable way of life in many people's minds.